Hello, welcome to Mystery Science Theater presents Uniform Circular Motion. If we have an object moving in a circular path with constant speed, that's what we refer to as uniform circular motion. And the question is, does an object undergoing uniform circular motion accelerate? Here we see a nice circular path. So if we have an object that's moving in a circular path, what we can tell is that its velocity is going to be tangent to the circle. I'm going to call this v1, the velocity 1. At a time later, we can see that it is going to be moving like so. We'll call that v2. And so the question of whether it's accelerating is a question of whether the velocity is changing. Even though this object has constant speed, the velocity is not constant because velocity includes speed and direction. So we can see here that v2 is clearly in a different direction from v1. So what that can tell us is that the object must be accelerating. So let's look at our acceleration then. We know that acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over the change in time, or the time interval over which it is acting. And so if we take the change in velocity, that's v final, or in this case v2, minus v initial, in this case v1. So if we look at this and we add these two vectors graphically, we take v2, looks like this, and then we add negative v1, so where v2 ends, v1 begins, so there's minus v1, and we can see then the resultant is from where this one started to where this one ended. That's our delta v vector right there. And you will notice that delta v vector is pointed towards the center of the circle. So we, what we can conclude is that the acceleration direction for an object undergoing uniform circular motion is directed towards the center. Now, there is a simple formula that can be derived to describe the acceleration of an object in uniform circular motion. We refer to this acceleration as centripetal. Centripetal is a big fancy word for center-seeking, or towards the center. So a centripetal acceleration, A with a little subscript of C, the formula that we use is equal to v squared over r, where v is the magnitude of the velocity, or in other words, the speed. So this will be an important equation for us as we study uniform circular motion. Another important equation is the fact that the object moving in a circular path at constant speed, constant speed tells us that we can find the speed by taking distance over time. Or in the case of a circle, the distance around a circle is the circumference and can be found by taking 2 pi r. And the time it takes for one complete rotation is what we call the period. Remember, period is the time for one complete cycle of a repeating kind of motion. So if we're talking about an object moving in a circle, one complete circle, the time it takes for that would be called the period. The symbol we use for period is a capital T. So if V is equal to D over T, and for a circle, the D is equal to 2 pi r, and the T is the period, we can say that V is equal to 2 pi r divided by the period. So that's going to be another pretty useful equation that we can have. There's another equation we can get, and this equation we're going to get by combining centripetal acceleration equals v squared over r with v equals 2 pi r over t. So when we combine these two equations, I have the centripetal acceleration equals 2 pi r over t squared over r. Right, so it's just v squared over r. So simplifying this down, I distribute that squared. I get 4 pi squared r squared over t squared, all of that over r. And so that r is going to cancel one of the r's on top, leaving me 4 pi squared r divided by t squared. So the centripetal acceleration can be found by taking 4 pi squared times r divided by t squared. So I've got that equation. I've got the v squared over r equation. And I have the equation for the speed. 
those are the three equations we have for uniform circular motion. Now we can use these equations in an example. For example, if we consider that the moon's orbit around the Earth is nearly a circle, we will treat it as a circle. And so we can find that the moon is accelerating towards the Earth because the Earth would be the center of that circle. And we can find the acceleration of the moon by using one of our equations that we just learned. We know, for example, that the moon to Earth distance is 3.84 times 10 to the 8th meters. That's something you can just look up. We also know that the period of the moon in its orbit around the Earth is equal to 27.3 days. So if I wanted to find the acceleration of the moon in its orbit around the Earth, I can use the formula because I have period and Earth-moon distance. In this case, is the radius of orbit. Right? In other words, if, if we have the Earth here, and the moon out here, the distance between the Earth and the moon is the radius of the moon's orbit. So what I can do is, since I have period and radius, I can use the equation, centripetal acceleration equals 4 pi squared r over t squared. So for this one, I just have to plug it in, but I run into a problem. I see that the period is in days. So I need to convert days. So I'm going to convert days to seconds. Get rid of days, go to seconds. One day is 60 times 60 times 24. That's 86,400 seconds. And I find that that equals 2,358,720 seconds. So that's the period of the moon's orbit in seconds. So now I just have to plug this in. Centripetal acceleration equals 4 pi squared times r divided by t squared. And when I push the buttons of my calculator, I come out with an answer of 0 0.00273 meters per second squared. That is the acceleration of the moon in its orbit. And the acceleration of the moon in its orbit is directed towards the center of the circle. In other words, the moon is accelerating towards the Earth. Let's look at another example real quick. What is the centripetal acceleration of a child 3.6 meters from the center of a merry-go-round? The child's speed is 0.85 meters per second. So here, let's write down what we know. We know the speed of the child is 0.85 meters per second. And we know the radius of the merry-go-round. The child is 3.6 meters from the center. So if I'm looking for the centripetal acceleration, I have speed and radius. I can just plug that into my formula. Centripetal acceleration equals v squared divided by r. So that's going to be 0 0.85 squared divided by 3.6, and I get an answer. Push a few buttons on my calculator. 0.85 squared divided by 3.6, and I get my answer of 0 0.20. So 0 0.20 meters per second squared. That would be the centripetal acceleration of the child on the merry-go-round. And the problems are pretty much that simple. Hope you've enjoyed this lesson and learned, learned what you need to. Thank you. You're going to do great.